ladies and gentlemen of the internet. I am here with another delightful book outlet book haul. I know you guys love them. I love them too. Of course I love them. I am a book buying freak and can't help myself. So for those of you who like my book purchasing spree hauls, stick around because this is a good one. And for those of you who don't like these types of videos, why are you watching? Just kidding. You can watch if you want. Even if you're an illiterate mook, hopefully I'm still entertaining for you. I'm just going to jump right into it. I pillaged the young adult section again. That sounded a little bit weird, but you, you get what I'm saying. Uh, I also got some uh, memoirs because I recently got on this kick of reading memoirs. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but anyway. So there's this thing called Wicked Cruel by... R R R R <laughs> Wicked Cruel by Rich Wallace, a trio of terrifying tales. So it's kind of like uh, those old uh, scary stories to tell in the dark type of deals, except there's just three scary stories in here. To be honest, I bought it because it was 99 cents and I had a jack-o'-lantern on the cover. That's like pretty much all you need to sell me a book. The next one we have is called The Underdogs by Sarah Hamill. Everyone has secrets. A lot of times I just kind of buy these because of how attractive the cover is or if it just looks like something that's up my alley. It usually is. Who killed Annabelle Harper? Fruit fly. When a popular teen beauty's body is discovered by the pool at an elite tennis club, the regulars are shocked, and understandably so, that's pretty effed up. Especially 12-year-old Evie and her best friend Chelsea. So they basically become little detectives and try to solve the case. I really like middle grade, middle grave? What is wrong with me? I like middle grade detective novels because they're fun and they don't take themselves too seriously like adult detective novels do, you know, and it's not like gruesome and everything. It's just kind of, it's just a fun little like adventurous thing. <laughs> moved the camera when I did that, I didn't mean to. And then I got this one called Flights and Chimes and Mysterious Times by Emma Travain. So again, I was attracted to the book cover because I mean, look at it. It looks so cool. 10 year old Jack Foster has stepped through a doorway and into quite a different London. Sold. Now let's see what else. Londinium. Londinium. Apparently that's the alter ego of London. It is a smoky, dark, and dangerous place homes, home to mischievous metal fairies. Fairies is spelled F-A-E-R-I-E-S, by the way. And fearsome clockwork dragons that breathe scalding steam. Sounds cool. So, I mean, there's more to it than that, obviously. But uh, I'm attracted to, like, other worlds, things of that nature. Kind of step through a doorway into another. Very Chronicles of Narnia type of deal, you know what I'm saying? Or Harry Potter, even. I'm really into stuff like that. And that's what it sounded like to me, so I went for it. We We've got Wilma Tenderfoot, The Case of the Frozen Hearts. This is by Emma Kennedy. So this is the first installment in the Wilma Tenderfoot series, which is a middle grade detective uh, series. I already have one of these, haven't read it yet, but this is now the first one. So now I can start with this one and go forward. If you can hear all that scraping and scratching in the background, I'm sorry, but the cat's litter boxes are like right across the hall and one of them decided, you know, right now would be a great time to take a giant poop and just take forever to cover it up, I guess. <laughs> and both girls are accounted for, so uh, it's Henry. I just embarrassed Henry on the internet. Henry just pooped. Anyway, Wilma Tenderfoot has a trusty dog named Pickle, and they're, they're on the case here in the first installment. Gilda Joyce, The Dead Drop by Jennifer Allison. And this also appears, if you can't tell just from the cover alone, appears to be a middle grade detective book as well. Whoopity doobity. I know I love it. Okay, let's see. What, it, what does it mean? Gilda turned back to Lincoln's ghost, thinking he might be able to explain the significance of the word. But when she turned around, she found herself staring into the barrel of a gun. The lipstick gun. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so apparently there's another twist. Gilda Joyce is a psychic investigator. So she goes to the spy museum, I guess. And now the ghost of Abraham Lincoln is haunting her. Okay, so it's, you know, you're gonna learn a little something too when you read this one, because it takes place in Washington, D.C. as well. Neat! All right, <laughs> while we're on Teenage Detectives, totally stole it from Best Friends whenever. I, I know probably like two people would know that, but I'm gonna call myself out before they call me out. It was appropriate, okay? So these two, Poison is Not Polite and Murder is Bad Manners, but they're the same series. A Wells and Wong Mystery by Robin Stevens. Oh my God, there's a freaking review on the back here by uh, like my favorite author ever, Jonathan Ogsier. I'm fairly certain I'm saying his name correctly. If I'm not, well, I'm the worst fan in the world. So these I think are just kind of spins on like the old Agatha Christie style of detective novels, but you know, 
they're kids. <laughs> okay, now this is cool. I got all four of these. There might be more, but I got the four that were available. We've got Gustav Gloom. Look at that. Is Doesn't that just make you want to read like all of it? Isn't that cool? Gustav Gloom and the People Taker. This is book number one. This is by Adam Troy Castro. And the second one is Gustav Gloom and the Nightmare Vault. Number three, Gustav Gloom and the Four Terrors. I like this one because it's hardcover. It's got this little windowy thing. Look at that. That's pretty cool. And the fourth one is Gustav Gloom and the Cryptic Carousel. What the hell? There's a thing on the camera now. Get! I will kill you. I am not ashamed to put bug guts on my new book. Sorry, we're not a dirty people. Just fruit flies tend to get out of control if you even have like one problem. Anyway, so this looks like a fun series and I can't wait to get into it. Oh, uh, I got another Spooksville book because I think I already have a few or one or four or two, I don't know, by Christopher Pike. These have been recommended to me by people. This one's called The Dark Corner. So I'm trying to sort of get the whole collection before I get into it because I have this tendency to like binge read a series like I read Miss Peregrine's Hope of Peculiar Children, like all three books like right in a row. And I got really upset because I went to Ohio. I took the second one with me thinking that, oh, I'm not going to finish this book on this trip. Well, I finished the book on the trip and then I was all upset because I didn't bring the third one with me. So I was just laying there like every night. Wish the book was here. <laughs> so I'm waiting to get like kind of all of these before I start reading these. Sorry if I sunk down a little bit. My feet hurt and I have to like prop myself on this bed. Next we have Bring Me the Head of Ivy Pocket by Caleb Crisp. You might have seen me uh, with the other one. I have the first one now. I need the second one still, I think. Let me check. My bookshelves are right above my head. I can't see. Okay, I don't know, and I'm not trying to break my neck trying to figure out. Anyway, she's a 12-year-old maid, and she's also a spectacular person. I guess she does detective stuff, too. She has the natural instincts of a junior Sherlock Holmes, the natural instincts of a five-star general, and the natural instincts of an assistant librarian. Next we have Every Single Second by Trisha Springstub. Springstub. Trisha Springstub. I saw this on the shelves at Barnes and Noble and it looked awesome and I wanted it and then uh, Book Outlet had it for cheap, so I got it. 12 year old Nella Sabatini's life is changing too soon, too fast. Her best friend Clem, oh I like that Clem, that's cute, doesn't seem concerned. She's busy figuring out the best way to spend the leap second, an extra second about to be added to the world's official clock. So I guess there's an extra second that will be added to the clock and when the extra second hits, past and present merge, something, I don't know if that's metaphorical or not, but either way it uh, sounded interesting, so I got it. I also got Sweetly by Jackson Pierce. It's basically, from my understanding, a spin on Hansel and Gretel. As a child, Gretchen's twin sister dis disappeared in the woods. Sounds like it could be Gretel. Ever since, Gretchen and her brother Ansel, Ansel and Gretel, you know, uh, have felt long branches of the forest reaching for them. And then they're invited uh, to stay with a beautiful candy maker who molds sugary magic, coveted treats that create confidence, bravery, and passion. There's like a monster in the woods that's after them and it sounds like Hansel and Gretel. So I look forward to that. Now we're away from the middle grade young adult things and into the, the big boy books, big girl books, big people books, the big books, whatever, the more expensive books. This is called House of The House of Silk by Anthony Horowitz. Um, this is one of the Sherlock Holmes-esque books where it's basically adult fan fiction, but they sell it. <laughs> There's all kinds of authors who uh, write Sherlock Holmes stories in the style of what they originally written in by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and then of course they just publish them under their own names, but it's a Sherlock Holmes story. At first I was resistant to read those because I'm such a huge fan of the original Sherlock Holmes stories, but I finally bit the bullet and read one recently and it was so good. It definitely couldn't hold a candle to the original stories, but it was good and I enjoyed it. So I went ahead and I ordered this because this one I was eyeing at the bookstore too. Obviously it's just, you know, some kind of crime that takes place in 1890 in London. And now here's some memoirs and biographies because I 
just obsessed with those all of a sudden now. I just finished reading Martin Short's memoir, which was amazing. Uh, and that's what really got me into this. I'm like, I didn't know biographies, memoirs could be so interesting. <laughs> I thought they'd just be boring. Like, I grew up in a small town in Connecticut. I was born in this hospital. I went to in this acting class in this college, and then I went to the theater, and then I made this movie, and then I married this person. I thought that would be so boring, but wow. Uh, Martin Short's memoir was awesome. So I was like, okay, this actually might be cool. And I'm currently reading Michael J. Fox's memoir, his first one, called Lucky Man right now. It's really good too, so I'm like, I'm gonna go ahead and get some more memoirs. Naturally, the next one was Steve Martin's, because Martin Short, Steve Martin, you know. This is called Bored and Standing Up. I'm looking forward to reading this one. I really like Steve Martin. I also got My Week with Marilyn by Colin Clark. This was actually made to a movie um, starring Michelle Williams, which I have seen. I have seen it, but I don't remember it at all. So anyway, I wanted to read it anyhow because I love Marilyn Monroe in case you didn't know. I also got Guts by Kristen Johnson. It's her memoir. Uh, if you don't know who Kristen Johnson is, if you've ever seen Third Rock from the Sun, she's the lady. <laughs> the tall lady. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see what she has to say. And finally, this one I'm looking forward to reading the most. I'm really excited about this. Andy and Don. It's um, about Andy Griffith and Don Knotts and about them making the Andy Griffith show together and how their friendship went and carried on and everything by Daniel Du... Daniel D. Vice, Vice, Vice. <laughs> Why do people have to have names like this? Sorry. I look forward to this very much because I watch an episode of the Andy Griffith Show every single night before I go to bed. Yeah, I'm a big nerd. Hello. I've always really liked Don Knotts and I'm really growing to love Andy Griffith as well. So, and they were best friends like forever. So there you go. That is my book outlet book haul for <laughs> this month. <laughs> In case you don't know what Book Outlet is, all of you book files, book of files, read files, those things, the people who like the books and the reading and things. Um, bookoutlet.com, they're awesome. This is not a paid video or anything like that. They don't really even care that I'm making this video probably, but uh, yeah, um, I just like to send business their way because they're awesome. They really do have good prices. And funny story, their store is located where I used to live in Buffalo, New York. It's so weird when the packing list comes because it says it's shipped from Cheektowaga, New York, and I used to live in Cheektowaga, New York, and I know where their store is. It wasn't there when I lived there. Go figure. But I know <laughs> where it is on Kenmore. It's so weird. So go check them out, bookoutlet.com. They have awesome deals. They have sales all the time. They have a membership uh, thing where you can get points for every dollar you spend and everything like that. And no, I didn't get any of these to make in exchange for this, making this video. I paid for these. I paid for these. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.